Hey everyone, welcome to the eighth episode of our Selenium series. And in this one, we are going to grab our project and make it more friendly by allowing to run it from the console. Now, we can understand that not always we'd like to open PyCharm and go through that process when we want to receive some results from the booking website. So it is probably a better idea to turn our project to be more friendly so we can automatically execute it from a terminal by writing only one command. So it is going to be a great lesson to understand how a project should be organized when it is almost finished. So let's dive into it. Alright, so one of the first things that we're going to do in this episode is to support running this project not always from an ID. Because in some cases, you only want to execute the bot to do its actions and to receive some results. And for doing such action, you maybe not always want to open it in a specific IDE. Further than that, sometimes executing bots from the command line is just more comfortable rather than going to PyCharm and basically pointing to your project and then using the shortcut of Shift F10 to execute your project. Sometimes you only want to do it from a terminal executing Python and then referring to the file. In our case, it is run.py. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, but our project currently does not support such a behavior because we have this tricky line inside the booking.py file that is going to add the location of our driver path to the path environment variable. Now, executing such a line from PyCharm will work because PyCharm knows how to take this line and attach it to a Python process and really add this location to the path system variable. But when it comes to other processes that we want to execute the project from them, for example, a command line interface in Windows, then we are going to have some troubles because we need to add the location of our Selenium drivers before we execute the project. So it is going to be tricky to handle that from the terminal level. And I'm actually going to prove you that our project won't execute successfully if we will try to run the run.py file from a terminal. So if you remember, in this directory, we have this file, which we look to execute. And if I was to say Python run.py, then you can see that it complains about how the Chrome driver executable needs to be in path. So I'm going to fix that so you will have the ability to execute this project from your terminal. It doesn't matter if you work with a Linux environment or if you work with a Windows environment. All right, so the way that we're going to fix that is by using try and accept blocks. And we can actually try to execute those lines of code. And if we will have some errors, then we could always print to our users that the user needs to basically execute some line from a command line that will add the C Selenium drivers folder to the path system variable. So let's go ahead and try to design that. So I'm going to grab all those lines of code in here and I'm going to indent all of those ones and I'm going to wrap it up with the try block. Now, right after this, we can go down here and we could say accept any exception and we could grab the exception inside a variable, something like E maybe. And as a starter, we could say something like print there is a problem running this program from command line interface. So that is just a great start handling things inside the except block. Of course, there's going to be some more additions in the future. So I'm going to go back to our terminal and I'm just going to run the same command. So it is going to be python run.py. And you can see that now we automatically see this, there is a problem running this program from command line interface because we were able to hit the accept block because we really have some exception. But in some other cases, we might also have some problems directly in our bot. Now, not all the exceptions in the world are about how the Chrome driver is not inside the path. So that's why it is quite dangerous to output something like that for all the exceptions that are going to occur in our program. So that is why we need to verify that we really hit this message that says Chrome driver executable needs to be in path. So that's why we could go back to PyCharm and we could verify that the message is really about how there is not a folder 
inside the system path. So we could say if str e, so that is a way to cache the exception message. And we could go back to terminal and check the substrings of this specific exception. So if we were to check if this in path is a substring in the exception message, then it really means that the problem is about how the Chrome driver executable needs to be in path. So I'm going to go back to PyCharm and I'm going to say if in path inside a string like that in the exception message, then we could go down and we could print this message. But if we have some other problem, say that we have a problem with Selenium, say that we have a syntax problem, then we would like to raise the original problem. And that is achievable by easily saying else and basically using the keyword of raise like that. Now, the minute that you are doing something like this, then once we don't hit that specific problem, then we really raise the original exceptions. So that is a great way to handle the exceptions. So now we could verify that this works. So we could go back to our terminal and we could clean the screen for a minute and we could say again, Python run.py. And you can see that we again received this message. So that means that our if conditional works great. Now, to be honest, I am going to change this message to be more friendly so the user could understand what command needs to be executed to add the location of our Chrome drivers to the pad system environment variable. So I'm going to grab a code snippet that I prepared as a print message and I'm just going to paste this in in here and obviously you can grab this from my website in the 8th episode of our entire series. So you can see that here I have a nicer message that says you are trying to run the bot from command line and the backslash n is just an escaping characters to just jump to the next line. So in the next line we say please add to pat your selenium drivers and for windows use this command. Now I know that this looks a little bit complex but that is actually a built-in windows command that we can execute to add some more locations to our already existing path system environment variable. Now, as I said in the first episodes, our path environment variable has already around 50 or even 100 locations that we have as a value. So that's why we use set path and we add the original paths. And in addition, that's why we have semicolon we add our path, which is going to be C Selenium drivers or whatever folder you have set up the Chrome driver into it. And if you use Linux, then you should execute this line, which is looking pretty much similar, only the Windows includes the set command. All right, so now we could basically go to our terminal and again run this command. And now you can see that we have a very friendly message. So the only thing that I have to do now is grab this and paste this in and now really customize the path that we should add here. So it will be selenium drivers once again. And I'm not always sure if it needs to be added with a backslash at the end or not. So I'm going to try both. And I recommend for you to try both as well. So let's try that and then try to run python run.py. And you can see that I again received this message. So let me clean the screen and run the same command with a backslash at the end and again executing python run.py and now you can see that our bot works and you can see that everything is pretty much functioning as expected you see that we were able to search the results you can see that we were able to filter out and also applying the sorting so this means that it works perfect and if we take a look to our terminal then you can see that we actually receive some warnings that we are really going to fix soon but at all in the big picture our bot functions perfect if we even execute it from a terminal. All right, so now you might notice some weird warnings about dev tools listening to our local host with some port, etc. So that is actually something that we did not see before, but actually when we work with browsers like Chrome, which is in our case Chrome driver, then Chrome now comes built in with some dev tools that is a set of web developer tools built in directly into Google Chrome browser. And I think when it recognizes that we execute some automated 
Chrome browser to run some test cases or basically automating websites, then it already executes that utility. Now, in this tutorial, I'm not going to cover too much about dev tools, so that is why we can allow ourselves to ignore those kind of errors. And to ignore those kind of errors in that stage, we need to go back to our booking.py file and basically add some additional configurations to our web driver instance. So it is going to be as easy as going back to PyCharm and add some lines in this file in here. And if you remember, we have some line that says super that is really responsible to instantiate an instance of the inherited class and as well as the class that we are writing just in that moment. So that is why we need to customize this line because we need to pass in some additional options to this class that we inherit. So it is going to be something like that. So we are going to say options is equal to webdriver.chrome options. And you can see that it is just a built-in class that I instantiate. And then I can say something like options.add experimental option and i'm just going to write in here some strings that will be responsible to ignore those kind of errors and i'm not gonna lie i search a lot about these dev tools and why do we see those warnings so i ended up by grabbing this code from a stack overflow poll which i will add in the description so you can take a deeper look in the discussion that is going on there all right so it will be exclude switches like that Pay attention that the switches is with a capital S. And then there is going to be one additional value that I will pass in here, which is going to be accepted inside a list with one element. And it is going to be enable dash logging like that. And once I have done this, then we need to grab the options, which is equal to an instance of Chrome options. And we need to pass this in in the initialization line. So it is going to be options is equal to options like that and then once i have done this then let's test out if we still see those logs so i'm going to open back our terminal and i'm going to say again python run.py and i'm just going to let our bot running and in the background let's see what is going on with the terminal and you can see that now since we ignore those kind of logs then we really don't see anything and you can see that our bot finished its job and that is perfect as we can see the results in this chrome browser page so that is one way that we can ignore those kind of errors and we can continue from here all right so now that we were able to figure this out then there is going to be one more thing that we'd like to test in this stage now we like to test if we will really see the original exception even if we are having an exception that is not about the Chrome driver being in the path. So that's why let's do something wrong in our project by purpose. So I'm going to go to our PyCharm and I'm going to say here A is equal to 2 divided by 0 like that. And we should receive basically a 0 division error before even our bot starts. So that is why we should now Go back to our terminal again and let's clean the screen and try to execute our bot one more time and see the results. Alright, so you can see that we see now the original exception which says to us zero division error because we really tried to divide a number by zero so we will have some errors and you can see how our bot did not even start executing the lines of code because we had some early exception so that is perfect and this is a great preparation for the future of this bot project and we can now continue extend our application as much as we want and even test this with a terminal now the main reason that i really wanted the ability to execute this project from a terminal that is because if you remember from the preview of the bot, then we'd like to visualize the results of the deals in a nice way so the user can really have a greater look on what are the results for the best deals. And we probably want to avoid doing that with the PyCharm and we probably want to visualize it nice with Terminal. So that is why I want the ability to execute this bot 
from any terminal, even if it's a Windows environment or even if it is a Linux environment. All right, so I hope that you have enjoyed in this episode and in the next one, we are going to start building the necessary methods to report the results to the terminal in a very nice table divided into hotel name, hotel's price, and as well as the hotel's rating. So it is going to be very fun and challenging doing something like that. And as usual, if you've enjoyed here, then please make sure to hit the like button and as well as subscribing to my channel so you will not miss an episode of this entire series. And I will see you very soon.